and welcome to an automotive and road transport systems network interview for IET.TV. I'm Paula Marie, manager for the network and I'm here at Warwick University to see the world's first sustainable high performance Formula 3 class car. With me today are Dr. Steve Maggs and project leader James Meredith here to discuss the new technologies and engineering advancements used in the actual development of the car. So firstly, Steve, tell me, how did the idea for a sustainably made Formula 3 car come about? Okay, well, a, a few years ago, we um, greened up one of our Formula student racing cars and found that we uh, got a great deal of interest and uh, developed some sort of interest within the industry and within other, um, within the you know, public interest with that project. So we, on the basis of that, we thought, well, let's do it properly this time. And we used the IMRC funding um, to fund this project. So tell me, how much has the car cost to produce? The, the car, the, the, the funding is £200,000 um, and we've also managed to achieve around about a similar figure in match funding from our, from our collaborators. How does the car compare with non-sustainable Formula 3 cars in terms of its performance? Well, what we've done is we've not actually um, made any changes to the safety critical parts of the car. Um, or th and, and generally those are the parts that give the car its performance, so the wings and the monocoque, um, the front and rear wings and the monocoque. Mm -hmm. um, the components that we've made changes to are non-safety critical, semi-structural. So the, the performance of those bits, shouldn't, they shouldn't have any effect on the performance of the car at all. The engine is uh, the biodiesel engine. We're getting similar performance at the moment um, from that than we would be from a petrol car. What types of technologies have been used in the development of the car, in particular the bodywork and fuel system? Well, we've used a number of different uh, technologies on the bodywork. We have recycled carbon fibres, um, we have recycled, res recycled resins made from recycled bottles, we have um, natural fibres such as flax and hemp in the bodywork, uh, we also have uh, a diesel engine in the car which will run on all sorts of different biodiesels made from old vegetable oil and uh, waste chocolate. We have um, use of natural uh, fibres such as carrot fibres and also potato starch to make some of the components. What fuel does the car take? Is it really running on chocolate, so the headlines say? It has been. It isn't today, but it certainly has been. The, uh, the biodiesel engine enables us to run on all sorts of different biodiesels and we have so far ran it on the dyno on different blends including rapeseed oil, a vegetable oil and chocolate. Okay. How does this fuel affect the performance when it's actually running? Certain biodiesels are much better than your average pump diesel, whereas other biodiesels can be a bit worse. Chocolate tends to, is at sort of the lower end of the spectrum, whereas other uh, rapeseed oils can be very, very good. Okay, okay, that sounds great. What's the top speed that you've achieved so far on track running? Well, we've had the car at about 135 miles an hour so far. Um, it, to get a bit more speed out of it, we're going to need to change the ratios in the gearbox, but for now, 135 miles an hour is pretty good at the moment. And what engineering challenges in particular have you had to overcome to achieve this high performance car? Well, one of the main challenges has been to actually get the diesel engine into the car. It's a very, very small package space and we've had to take a road car engine and squeeze it into the very small space. So it's, it's required quite a lot of engineering and effort to do that. Equally, many of the, the green components on the car, it's, it's their first use or first real use in, in, in motorsports. So, it's taken a number of iterations and quite a lot of effort to get uh, parts which we can use on the car. Was that the hardest challenge to overcome? Were there any that were more difficult than that? I, no, no, I think, I think so, you know, some of the new materials have been a major challenge because we've had to have quite a lot of goes at getting them right. So following on from that, Steve, tell me briefly about some of the um, other projects you've, you've currently got or about to commence. OK, so we have a number of current projects, um, engineering doctorates, for example, um, which are looking at issues linked in with the sustainable motorsport angle. One of them is looking at um, how to cope with variable biodiesel um, and, and still get performance from it. Um, one of the problems with biodiesel, if you've got the, the, the raw materials used to make it, it's often quite variable depending on what you're using. We have another one who's looking at hybrid sports cars and how do we go about getting perf um, maximum performance from a hybrid sports car. Um, a lot of the projects we do are linked in with a, a much larger project called Wealth Out of Waste where we're looking at agricultural waste materials and how to go about processing those in a novel way to produce novel um, polymers and fuels and possibly other materials, maybe pharmaceutical as well. And we're working with the uh, horticultural research people at Wellsbourne on those. 
Um, interesting projects for the future. Um, possibility of a link up with an Italian university, looking to do similar things to the, the, the we've done with the car, but working on yacht design, which is a really interesting one for the future, we think. Yep. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you.